Hey everybody, I'm Joey and today we're here in Maryville, Illinois, small town America, where we'll learn how to make some incredible from scratch pastrami. So follow me and let's meet America. Today we're here in Maryville, Illinois, which is a sleepy little bedroom community located about 20 miles outside of St. Louis. I'll introduce you to Lee Conway, who's been a professional chef for over 35 years, and he'll show you how to make pastrami from scratch, and then we're gonna use that in a Reuben sandwich. Now, let's turn up the heat and cook some meat here at Conway's Catering and Good Eats Deli. There's no wrong answer, but I love the Reuben sandwich. It's fantastic. If you get a sandwich anywhere else, it's gonna taste like disappointment. The sandwiches are great. I've had everything across the board here. So Lee, tell me, what are you cooking today, man? We're gonna make our Conway's Good Eats Pastrami from scratch. We take a brisket, uh, this is a choice brisket, it's got the full fat amount on it. I don't buy a competition brisket, which is, you know, a lot better quality, usually prime or, or wagyu, something like, along those lines. But all I'm gonna do is take the connective tissue off of it, because as you all know, in, uh, in meat, the fat is where the flavor's at. Connective tissue is the, 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 the tough stuff, the nerve endings, the things that hold muscles together, just like we have in our own body that keeps you know, say three muscles together, the brisket comes off the front plate and that's connected to the rib area for the chuck. And that all it is is all the tough, tough things, not the, the fat that melts as you cook. So is there a certain uh, amount of fat cap, like a quarter inch or something like that that you're looking to keep on this? Not really, I just do it by eye for the most part. As I said, between the cooking process, I roast them, I smoke them. And then I, uh, it, a lot of that really good fat melts down into the protein itself, into the muscle. If I was making burgers and I'm not a burger place, I would probably grind some of the brisket fat into there. This nice white fat is really good, good quality fat, just like on a tenderloin. The, the, it's a non-moving muscle. You have that beautiful white fat that keeps it in place and uh, protects it. So that's basically it. I don't take a whole lot off of it. If I was going to compete, this would be completely bare and no fat whatsoever. But I want the fat on there so it's got good flavor. And as everyone at home has heard me say many times before, the fat is where it's at. That's right. And I think I would taste pretty good if they were to cook me. <laughs> so that's it right there. I'm going right. to grab a pan. We're going to go through the brining process, show you how I inject it. And then I submerge it in brine for three to five days so it's got flavor all the way through. Well, I'm already hungry. I can't wait to see that process. Join us for the Meet America podcast presented by Code 3 Spices as we meet experts and discuss incredible stories, business and life advice, meat, of course, and much, much more. Like a bunch of friends gathered around the grill, the meat brings us together, but the conversation will head in exciting directions. Are you ready for an adventure? Follow along every week as we meet America. All right, so we got it in the pan. What do we do now? I'm gonna pull out a magic pot, and I'm gonna show you how I make the brine. Gallon of water, cup and a half of kosher salt, cup of granulated white sugar, half a cup of packed brown sugar, tablespoon of pickling spice, quarter cup of honey, and this is very similar to a corned beef brine, but as you can see, I have sugar and honey in here, which gives it a nice sweetness. Instacure, which is pink salt, sodium nitrate. It helps to keep the, the color and helps to cure the meat for st stability and shelf life. And then I have five cloves of garlic, whole cloves of garlic in there. Then I'm gonna bring that to a boil 
As I said, keep it on 24 hours in the refrigerator once it's done, and that infuses all the flavors so you have that intense uh, brine for your, your pastrami. After it's boiled, I put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours overnight, and then I pump the brisket. First, I inject it with the brine, then I submerge it in the brine, put weight on top of it, and then let it set for three to five days so that it really it creates an osmosis where it takes the liquid out of the meat and re-puts the, the flavored liquid into it. I was able to pick this up from Code 3 Spices from Chris and Mike. It's an injector. I can set the ounces on here. It's got a dial. What I do is do it 11 at a shot, and then I pump that. I'm gonna strain this real quick so I don't get my needle uh, clogged with things. If I didn't inject it, it would take five to seven days, how I usually do it. But what I'm doing is speeding up the process just for uh, the, the deli. Okay, what I do is pop that in there, and I get my needle to where it's gonna pump. And so when, when you inject this, this takes the brining process down, like you said, from five to seven days, closer to three, three. to five. Th usually three. Three, three. three to four days. Beautiful. And I, and I inject the, the, the thicker part. This is the, the, there's the flat underneath and the points up top, which I like the point. It's really fatty. It's got a ton of flavor in it. And I don't go in a certain row or anything, like I said, like competition. What I do is try to get the fatter parts and I'm not doing it to, to completely flavor it because I really like the submersion mm -hmm. of it. You know, it still does a lot. But as you can see. Oh, you can see that pumping right up as you inject that liquid into it. That's pretty neat. Take that out of there and I put, I don't want to waste. So I shoot all my brine back into here. And I take uh, my strain brine, put it over top. Let it take a nice little bath in there. That's it. Everybody into the pool, right? And then I put this brine back with the pickling spice in it. Garlic cloves, you can see everything in there. I'll keep it like this for a day. Mm -hmm. Flip it Okay. that way. Then I flip it back again the other way. So it gets all that good flavored brine all the way through. Covered or uncovered? Uh, covered. covered, always covered. Okay, so Lee, this has been refrigerating, brining for three days. Yes, sir. What's next? Okay, I already rinsed it off under cold water. I'm gonna take it out of the pan. I'm gonna turn it flat side down. I'm gonna take ground coriander and black pepper, and I'm gonna really not be liberal with it, but I want it to where it adds a nice flavor. I don't want it offensive. So I'm gonna pat that down. I'm gonna flip her over and do the same thing on this side. Then she goes to the smoker for three hours. I smoke with cherry wood, I start with charcoal. I smoke it 225 degrees and I keep it on there for three hours. And I don't do a real heavy smoke. I try to do it light. Once again, it should complement the meat, not distract from it, nor do you wanna be burping it up for a week. Anyway, the flavor is, is impeccable with that smoke on the outside, and you don't have a smoke ring like you do with a, a, a fully smoked brisket. Remember, this is cured and brined, so it stays nice and pink and it's a beautiful piece of meat. So we pulled it off the smoker and now what do you do next? And then what I do is I take hot water, I do a, a serrated pan, I put four inch pan, I put the, the hot water in the bottom because I don't want to drop my temperature in my meat. I put the serrated pan like that. I put the brisket over top of the liquid. I wrap it with plastic wrap. And does that just help the steam stay in? Yes, sir, and keeps the moisture in with the plastic wrap. It is a process, and people don't realize that when you see the price of pastrami, whether it's commercially done or done in an artisan fashion like we're doing it here, the old days, 
I wrap it with foil, and it's all to keep the moisture in because you don't want to lose that quality of that brisket. And so the plastic wrap on there just provides a little tighter seal than the yes, foil? Yes, sir. It keeps the moisture in, keeps everything buttoned up nice and tight. Then what I do is I take it, I roast it at 300 degrees in the oven for another two hours. So this is truly a labor of love then? Absolutely. And that's all she wrote. So while that's cooking, I think we all know nothing goes better with pastrami than? Sauerkraut, okay. Russian dressing, and rye bread. All right, so can you show us how to make some sauerkraut? Absolutely. All right, so walk us through how we're making sauerkraut. Okay, sauerkraut, I buy my sauerkraut already brined or, or fermented. And what I do is I rinse it under cold water to get some of that extra saltiness out of it. Okay. Then I top it with brown sugar, uh, caraway seed. I put applesauce in it, gives it some nice texture, some nice sweetness to it. And then always a nice dark beer. And today we're doing a Leinenkugel, creamy dark. It's important that when you're pouring this, all this alcohol in the food, when it cooks, you're gonna lose that alcohol. So it's really important to get some of that back in with a bottle of beer or some whiskey. Right? And the chef or the cook, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So, and a great dark beer goes excellent with the sandwich. So what I do is I cook this usually around 45 minutes or so. I don't wanna cook it too dry, but I want those flavors once again to mesh. And then I'll sit that in the refrigerator 24 hours once again, so it's full of flavor. My things that I always try to preach and tell younger cooks to do, your food's gotta look great, but it's gotta taste even better. That's what they're leaving with, is that wow factor, that yum factor, that uma uh, umami, that sixth taste, you know, when they leave. Not sick taste, that sixth taste is that yum, yum factor. You know, and that, that's what I try to do with this entire sandwich. My Russian dressing's the same way. The, the sauerkraut, full of flavor, good rye bread, and obviously the pastrami has an excellent flavor. I love your approach, man. So while this is cooking, shortly that pastrami will be ready to come out of the oven, right? Absolutely. Two hours, we're ready to go, and then we can put a sandwich together, and you guys, you're the taste testers, you're the audience, you know, we'll see if we pass the audition. This is out of the oven. What do we do now? We're gonna slice it up and make a sandwich. This was in the oven for two hours at 300 degrees, cooking with moisture, which we talked about underneath the pan. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to slice this really, really thin because remember, once again, I'm gonna heat it on the griddle. Okay, this, this is the point which is fattier. And what I try to do is mix this when I make the sandwich so you have the some of the point and some of the flat, and I'm gonna put this back in here, and I'm gonna grab the flat, which is a lot leaner, and I mix the two. And what you really have to remember is that you're gonna cut cross grain. The grain in this, as you can see, Joey is running this way, yep. so I'm gonna go across it, okay, so that way it eats a little bit more tender. Well, and you can tell this is a drier piece, this part right here. Speaking of tender eating, you know, this smells so good. Lee, I gotta get bitesies on this. Go for it. I'll watch Jump my, in. I'll watch I'm my not hands whack around you. the knife, okay? Look at that at home. That looks phenomenal. You can really taste that black peppercorn hitting the back of the throat. You get that coriander in there. The depth from that smoke flavor. And Lee, this is incredible. Man. Thank you very much. And you were talking about that gentle smoke flavor. That's exactly what I'm getting on my tongue right there. It's not overpowering. It really just sort of complements the spices and the fat that are already on the brisket. Awesome. All right, so our pastrami is cooked. Now it's time to build a delicious sammy, right? So can you walk us through that? Sure can. I take our Russian dressing, which is mayonnaise, uh, Worcestershire ketchup, sweet pickle relish, a little bit of paprika. Put that on there so it's nice and flavorful. Put that on the griddle. Griddle's 300 degrees. Want a nice toast on there, caramelization of the bread. I'm gonna take my sauerkraut that I showed you how to cook that. This has been cooked, sat overnight. Looks incredible. I put it on the griddle. As, as you see, we don't skimp here and we come to Conway's, it's exactly how you get it. I'm gonna put my Swiss cheese on there. 
Dietz and Watson, all good quality lunch meats. Bring them in from Philadelphia. I'm gonna toss my pastrami in the back here. Is that just heating it up a little bit? Just gonna reheat it up. A little bit of water on there to steam it through. You can smell through that camera. Let our bread toast up a little bit. I'm gonna put my sauerkraut on top. And we do serve this sandwich with a fork and knife. But the, the true Reuben eaters just do the grab and, and bite. So, and our sandwich comes with six ounces of meat. That's only six ounces? That's that looks like a six ton. Six ounces. Piled high with the sauerkraut. Gonna flip our lid. And there you have it. Conway's Pastrami Baruba. All right, Lee, I, I, serve, I see you serve this up with uh, a knife and fork. It's a big sandwich. I'm gonna try to go but at you, it. But Cans. you're a manly guy, I'm, Joe. You I'm, don't need the <laughs> tools. I don't, that's what I was just saying. I'm going right on Tool in. Tool the trade, have at it's it. It's a big, big <laughs> sandwich. For everyone at home, take a look at that. And that, by the way, is only half a sandwich. Let's dig in. Man, you get a little bit of the crunch from that bread, some of that sweetness from the Russian dressing, the sauerkraut, you're getting some of the additional texture coming from that. And then you're smacked with the awesome flavor of that pastrami, that coriander, and that black pepper. Man, this is absolutely tremendous. And I find, Joe, you get that pickling spice of the brine underneath it all, at the very end, like a finish, you know? Absolutely. Of the fine wine. It's been really a pleasure meeting you today. I uh, wanna thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. And I want to wish you continued success and growth. Here's to Conway's Catering in Delhi. Look, if you're ever in St. Louis or Maryville, Illinois, come on in and give this place a shot. You'll be glad you did. Our specials, you know, are, are unbelievable. I try to be as creative as can be, but things people can identify with. We do real Philly cheesesteaks, as you said, Joey. We do chicken cheesesteaks, we do uh, beef cheesesteaks bring our rolls in from Philadelphia, our lunch meats from Philadelphia, but more than anything, our customers make us perform each and every day. They really do. Cheers to that, brother. Thanks. If you wanna make a Conway's pastrami right at home, just follow these steps. Begin with a choice brisket and trim to remove the connective tissues and hard fat. Next, make a brine using the following ingredients. One gallon of water, one and a half cups of kosher salt, one cup of granulated white sugar, a half a cup of brown sugar, one tablespoon of pickling spice, a quarter cup of honey, five whole cloves of garlic, a quarter cup of pink salt. Next, mix all these ingredients together and bring it to a boil and remove from the stove then refrigerate it for 24 hours. Next, inject the brisket with the brine. After injecting your brisket, submerge it in the brine, cover and refrigerate for three to five days. Now remove the brisket from the brine and rinse. Season the brisket with a mixture of ground coriander and black pepper. Now fire up that smoker with cherry wood and heat it to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Smoke the brisket for three hours. Now create a steam pan using hot water in the bottom and placing the brisket in an elevated serrated pan above the hot water and wrap with plastic wrap and foil. Roast it in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for an additional two hours. Once that's done, remove it from the oven, let it rest for at least 15 minutes, and then slice real thin. You can serve this up as a main dish or as a delicious salmon. And today's pro tip to turn up the tasty, remember your food has got to look great, but it has to taste even better. Use high quality ingredients and patience to turn up that yum factor. And like Lee's tattoo says, have faith, life is good. We hope that you learned how to make some incredible from scratch pastrami. And if you like this video, you know the drill. Go ahead and hit that big thumbs up like button or even better, subscribe to our channel so you can follow our adventures as we continue to meet America.